Mike Vickery joins us here on Smash Mouth Radio. Uh, Mike, Scott Griffin here. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Scott. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I didn't mean to mess up your last name there. I, I, was, you, I don't know if you remember Doug Vickers, but for some reason, I was sitting here scrolling through some things, and I saw Doug Vickers, and I called you that, so I apologize. No, hey, as, listen, I've been called a lot worse, I can assure you. <laughs> as a coach, you're called a lot worse. So just getting the name close is good. That, that's a good no thing. No question. Um, New Jersey, Minnesota have used this replay deal, uh, but Alabama's the first to do it in totality where schools can – Use it. Just give me your initial reaction before we start breaking down how you're going to execute it. Just, just your reaction to the, to this finding. Yeah, we we kept hearing some uh, rumors about it, and and I think um, number one, I, from a larger school standpoint, uh, some of the some of the larger classification, I think is a great thing. I think it's something that uh, you know um, there'll be some challenges, obviously logistically that that come about, and we'll talk about that. But um, but I I think initially, I, I think it's. A, I love being proactive, doing something different, and, and trying, you know, pushing the envelope a little bit. Um, you know, especially um, being kind of a pilot nationwide. And I, I look forward to it, and, and you know, I'm willing to try anything. You know, we have uh, our, as coaches, we we mess up a lot, and as officials, we they, they mess up a lot, and, and and anything that we can do to to try to correct some um, some, some issues, I think is a positive thing. So. Now we know about the iPads are always there and you guys can look at it and get feedback as far as cameras are concerned. That's what they're going to use here. How do you see this playing out initially until you go through it and kind of figure out how to do it on the fly as far as using yeah, well, it to your advantage? Well, one, one thing that we're able to do in high school that, that the other levels of, of football do not get to do is we actually already have video on our sideline and our press box. Um, as a, as an offensive coordinator, um, in my previous school, I, I had a I had a TV that went everywhere with me, a little 19 inch TV that sat right beside me in the box, and I watched every every play, um, at, you know, in between series, every offensive snap, and um, we were at, at from multiple angles. So we were, we we've been using video um, and technology on our sidelines and our press boxes for uh, you know three four years now. So. Um, from that standpoint, the technology is really already there. A lot of us are already accustomed to using that kind of stuff. I think the uh, um, there'll be some challenge. There'll, there'll be some things that we have to figure out. You know that you know is high school football. We don't have professional uh, filmers up there. You know, we a lot of times we have dads or kids and those kind of things up there working cameras that that we're relying on. And uh, you know, sometimes they miss a play. Sometimes they start the camera late. You know, those kind of things. So. So there's some there's some of that that'll happen initially that we have to kind of figure figure out, but um, uh, I, I think it's a technology that we you know all of us are have kind of gotten used to already. Yeah, and to me that that was the big question I had with Alvin Briggs, and he seemed to poo poo it off because I know a lot of these things are shot so wide, or at least tackle to tackle, or pl- player to player, left to right, or top to bottom, so that you can see how the play develops. It may not be tight enough to see an infraction or not you know what i'm saying correct yeah and, and that it's a good point and and i think those are things that they'll have us you know maybe not this first year but we'll see those those the issues you know when when you can't really tell for sure if it was the right or wrong call because it is too wide you we're, we'll end up having to get you know another camera in place that just strictly focuses on focuses on the football you know those kind of things because even like our, our when we film an end zone copy you know from an end zone angle you know we're really focusing in between the tackles we're not looking at things outside from a wide receiver standpoint and vice versa up in the box right. that camera is really focusing on the entire field and not necessarily focused in their tight on the on the box so um so that those definitely will be things that we have to kind of work through um and as we as we get into it and then there's the strategy. I think it's interesting that nobody talks about it, even in the NFL of, you know, how do you manage the two that you will get in a game balanced with, I could lose a timeout here, you know? Yeah. I, I jokingly told our coaches uh, last week that no matter what happens on our first play next year, I'm throwing a, I'm throwing a red flag out there just because I've always wanted to do it. So I thought, it was, you know, we'll just have fun with it right from the beginning. Cool. And, and we're, no, no matter the play, we're just going to throw one out there. But I, I think it, I think it does create a, a different um, set of challenges for as, as a coach to try to, so that's something that as high school coaches, we haven't had to think about, haven't had to make that 
that split second decision on whether or not it's worth the challenge or not. And, um, you know, that can cost you a game. I mean, you, you lose a timeout here or there, or, um, it, that's a, that, that can make a big impact on the game. So being able to do that, knowing that we're not 100% sure on the technology, we don't have 13 different cameras pointing at different, different things, uh, on the field. So, um, there's times when you may challenge one and you just can't tell um, because of, you know from that one camera angle and and so that that becomes scary I think and and we have to kind of work through that and what I think it'll end up doing is making us as coaches uh, go invest uh, uh, more more in some of these cameras and some more of these some more of these angles. That's what I was going to say. I, I can foresee a school having a replay camera guy that is real tight on the ball because it's most action will at least be around the ball or at least the line and kind of see. I mean, I, I could see that happening. Yeah, I, I, we we actually discussed that this weekend. Uh, Alabama had a, a coaching clinic this weekend, and some of us we were sitting around talking, and that's really what I think most people will probably go to, a separate camera, camera strictly for that, fo- focusing on the ball. You know, the DB Sports, the, the group that's um, kind of partnered with the high school association selling these uh, packages, you know, they have everything from pylon cams to, you know, goalpost cams to, you know, really anything you want, to, but you got to have money to get it, you know. And um, so I, it didn't take long before you start realizing, hey, wait a minute, we we may have just lost the game because we didn't have a, a you know, an end zone a pylon camera on there. Well, you know, hey, that, that may be worth the investment, you know, down the road. So um, that's, That'll definitely play into that, you know, where this is going and, and getting more cameras, getting more angles, having someone dedicated to just being an, uh, a replay guy. Yeah, see, and we were watching NFL in high school, um, excuse me, NFL in college like you do. I mean, high school, I'm guessing what you're saying is it's really no different because I think a lot of people's first impressions are, come on, how many close plays are there in high school? But I think you would say there's a ton. There's as much as anywhere else. Yeah, I think anytime you snap a football, there's going to be uh, some some issues as far as uh, you know close calls here or there. Um, you know, and, and I, I don't think it, cha- it will change the games or as much again because of the you know lack of the different angles and stuff initially. But you know, what, there, there's there's times where where uh, team may snap the ball with 12 guys on the field. Those type of things that will be able to be seen by this. That may, maybe they missed, you know, maybe miscounted a, a punt, a, you know, a punt block team that had 12 guys on the field and would have been giving you a crucial first down, you know. So um, th- those are the kind of things that as far as, you know, being able to tell if his toe was in or out, I, I think that's going to be hard initially, but there are yeah. some bigger issues that we see, you know. Uh, uh, again, a man running off the field late, uh, uh, off sides right. on a kickoff, th- things like that, that, that I think we, we can go back in and, and take a look at some of those things. Mike Vickery, our guest, Northridge High School coach. We're talking about this new replay rule with high school football here for a couple of minutes on Smash Mouth Radio. So tell us what your personal experience is at your home field. You will have how many cameras, how how advanced are you guys over there? Well, we we always have, um, you know, uh, an end zone and a, and a wide view right now. Um and, you know, again, the beauty of it is with, with the technology that's available with iPads and that kind of stuff, you, you can add as much as you want. Um, we haven't had that need before to add very much more. A lot of people will have a tight and a wide copy up, up top from their press box and an end zone. So a lot of people already are filming with three angles. I, I really think we'll probably end up um, having to go with a separate uh, a, a separate angle for strictly the uh, – the actual replay, um, replay system, but, um, yeah. but right now yeah. it's a it's a wide and a and a, um, and a tight copy from behind, and, and again that end zone copy is strictly focusing on the offensive and defensive lines, and that's going to be really hard to get anything from, um, other than maybe a, a, a maybe a fumble or not fumble on, on someone going to the ground that kind of thing. So I, I think there's a way to do it. I think it's going to take some time to, to kind of tweak it and get it the way we that's most uh, beneficial to it to, to high schools, but I think it's a great start. If you only could add one, where's the most needed? Would it be along the plane of the goal line? Uh, would it be down the sideline, out of bounds things? What, what is your opinion on well, what is what is the play probably missed the most when you're looking at film? Yeah, 
I, I think one of the, the the biggest things that's missed the most is, is from a fumble standpoint, whether or not someone's down or not when the ball comes out. And I, I, any, you know, from a a, a tight a, a tight view from from behind, something where we're focused on the ball when, when that knee touches, when the ball comes out, that kind of stuff. I think would be um, it's probably one of the most missed calls that I see. Um, that that game changing calls that we see um, every, every Friday night, and um, it, it's hard for officials to see. Um, you know, when, when a ball gets ripped out and that, and that kind of thing, and being able to go back and look at that um, a tighter copy from the from behind, from an end zone look, or or some some more similar, a lower level look, um, I think would be great. As far as officiating in general, are you? I mean, look, they're human; they're going to make mistakes. But just in general, overall, do you think we don't appreciate how good the officials are in high school, or is it just pretty good, or is it not good? We need better uh, candidates because I've read some articles that, you know, officials take so much heat, they're having trouble finding quality people to even want to do it for the money, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I, we see it all the time. I actually have friends who have been officials and because they just, you know, they don't, don't want to be talked to that way and that kind of stuff. And, and it is hard because, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a side job for a lot of guys who, who just want to go out there and be a part of something, make a little bit of extra money. And it's not a lot of money. So, so you have to weigh whether or not it's worth it and in the, in the financial benefit of that. So, so you you are left with with guys who who may not, you know, uh, be doing it, uh, you know, for the um, for the right reasons or, or you know, for the most part, we see I mean, our officials are solid, and, you know. But um, I, I, if you go back and look at the number of uh, overturns in college and NFL, I, I will guarantee you it, it, it's pretty high uh, on on challenges, coaches' challenges or box challenges. Where, where calls are overturned, and those are guys that are doing it um, at, at a very, very high level. So, so our guys are going to miss a lot of things, and, and that, and that's okay. Um, but I th- think this gets us closer to a solution. You know, we have to figure out how this is going to work. You know, right now they're saying that if a visiting team has has the um, equipment to do it, that the visiting team can set up the uh, uh, the replay system. That the home team doesn't even have to have it um, for it to be used. And, and Really? Um, there's a lot of people who travel to other parts of the state and play games who really get uh, weary of playing with other teams' officials. Um, and um, at the end of the day, you know, those, those, those other teams that you're playing are paying that bill. So, um, so you know, in, in a coach's mind, we're saying, well, hey, we're not going to get those calls when we go to uh, an enterprise or whatever it may be. Um, and, and this would kind of equalize, you know, be kind of the equalizer there when you're traveling and pl- playing games with other people's officials. No doubt about that. Um, let's talk a little spring football for you. A lot of high schools wait because of colleges ongoing now and then wrapping up. How do you guys manage your spring around colleges, or, or is it not even a factor? You just worry about weather and, and other sports and who plays what and all that kind of thing. What's the thinking? Yeah, for the most part, most most high schools in our state are, are you know waiting until that last week of April, first week of May um, to start it, and. And really, college the college scouts college scouts getting out, being able to get out, and be see guys is part of the equation. But a big part of it for us has always been um, you, you really try to wait as long as you can for other sports to get done. Um, baseball, track, um, soccer, where we have a lot of athletes, um, two sport athletes, three three sport athletes even that that are competing and and, and and coaches. You know, a lot of our coaches are assistant baseball coaches, you know, assistant track coaches, that kind of thing. So we try to wait until after the state track meet and after uh, you know. I think baseball would be into the third round. So we try to wait as long as we can to make sure we have as many of our players as possible and as many of our coaches as possible. And that's really the biggest factor for us going later. You got any prospects we need to be aware of? Not to single out one guy over another, but lo- people love talking about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. On there you know, every year or so. Yeah, we, we have, uh, uh, we, we do. We have, we have several, uh, several 2019 guys who I, we really like. You know, it, it, we have a unique situation. We have one, probably one of the best, um, kickers in, in the in the southeast and and probably and one of the best snappers in, in probably the country so um we may have the best snapper kicker combo in, in the entire nation uh, is, is wow. um uh, which is is really neat uh a really neat thing and and you know so we have we have a couple guys there we have a 2020 class that we feel we have four or five guys in that will have an opportunity to to um, play at the fbs level so we're excited about it and 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 this recruiting uh, uh, period that's coming up will be big for a lot of our guys to get coaches in and see them and um, and see, see what happens. 
what did you find coming from Daphne where the talent is terrific? Not that it lacks anywhere else in the state, but, uh, when you got here and building what you're building, what, what have you found generally speaking? Well, you know, from a, there's good players everywhere, everywhere you go. And I, I think, uh, in South Alabama, Baldwin County area, that the, they're really uh, been really strong of the kind of a tradition of having um, you kind of kids lived and breathed football and, and they played it year round and um, you know they they were they were in youth leagues as seven eight year olds playing with that you know that Daphne or Spanish Sport helmet on you know and and here it's a little different because most of our kids play flag football up and they don't there's not a lot of there's not a big tackle football circuit here um, so that's that's definitely something different. Um, you know, from a recruiting standpoint, you know, we're trying to fix some some issues that we have here. You know, there's a there's a ton of talent on the coast: Mobile, Ballin County, Pensacola, New Orleans. You know, all the way to Tallahassee. So we had a ton of coaches through our place at all times, and and we don't have the same kind of traffic here in Tuscaloosa because we're kind of off the beaten path a little bit, and and schools have to weigh um, their you know cost. You know, the, the benefit of, of, of getting out and seeing all these schools in these rural areas as opposed to staying in the more centralized urban areas. Right. And um, right. so, so there's some different challenges that we're, that we're facing as far as uh, of getting kids to where they they live, they're living, loving and living football and where we're getting them to the next level where, where we, where we ultimately want to see them. Sounds like good stuff. So when does your spring start? Is it going to start in yep. a couple of weeks? Yeah, we, we start May seventh, um, and we'll, okay. we'll go for two straight weeks. We, in high school football, you have ten days. Uh, you have fifteen days to get in ten. We'll go. We'll get our ten days in in two straight weeks, and we actually play Central High School at at Northridge on Friday the eighteenth um, at six p.m. So anyone who wants to come out and watch a, a good spring high school football game between two Tuscaloosa City schools would uh, would love to have you. That'd be awesome, and um, so you'll go. Monday through Friday, just two straight weeks, basically, as opposed to staggering it at all. Or, yeah, it, it, we we will, and we we would like to stagger it. And again, it kind of goes back to our, our our baseball talk and and seeing where they would be um, in, in the playoffs. And um, most of our, for all baseball players, and you know, I, I get really nervous on, on starting too early and, and starting without without quarterbacks. So um, that's a uh, that was kind of why we're pushing it back and going two straight weeks and and, um, and not staggering it. 